I want to introduce a very special guest, Nigel Farage. We call him the Brexit guy. He has a special relationship with Donald Trump and he's our link across the pond. Nigel, um, what, can you bring it down to earth for us? Because I think we've missed something. Why is it that the Brits left Europe? Why is it that in America we voted for Donald Trump? The tea leaf readers got it completely wrong. The pollsters were wrong. What's going on that we haven't figured out yet? Well, it's called a political revolution, and 2016 was the beginning of that revolution, and believe me, uh, it is not going to go away. And it's because people have had enough of politically correct politics that doesn't believe in anything, doesn't say anything, and frankly, is there to support big business uh, against the interests of ordinary people. And when you add to that, in, a, in the case of our country, open-door immigration and the risks of terrorism, are you surprised that people wanted change. Any second thoughts in Britain about Brexit? I mean, have some Brits got oh, a buyer's quite, remorse? No, no, no. No? No quite, no, quite the opposite. Actually, the opinion polls now show that a significant number of people voted Remain because the, because the Chancellor told them their house price would collapse. That hasn't happened. Um, and you know something? There are also some people out there who were genuine Democrats who respect the vote and say, let's get on with it. Unlike the people protesting in Fifth Avenue uh, who can't gr grow up to the fact that Trump is now the US president. Now, the Speaker of the British House of Commons says that uh, Donald Trump should not be invited to speak to the House of Commons, to Britain's Parliament. Listen to this for a moment, Nigel. As far as this place is concerned, I feel very strongly that our opposition to racism and to sexism and our support for equality before the law and an independent judiciary are hugely important considerations in the House of Commons. I am even more strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. Now, I'll get to Nigel in a moment. On the left-hand side of your screen, you see Vice President Mike Pence arriving on Capitol Hill. He's going to go straight into the Senate chamber, where he will cast the deciding vote, which makes Betsy DeVos the Education Secretary. You're watching a little history here. Mm. I don't know how many years it's been since a Vice President had to, ca had to cast the deciding vote in a nomination process. In fact, I'm told it's never happened never. before. Never happened before. History. You're watching a little history in this live action presidency, live action news. There it is. It's happening. He's going to the Senate. He will cast his vote momentarily. As you're watching that, let me get back to Nigel. We just heard the Speaker of the British House of Commons, Nigel, say Donald yeah. Trump, President <laughs> Trump, not welcome here. Is he, does he represent any sizable chunk of, of British uh, opinion? There's a bigger point than that, if, if I may, uh, that as Pence goes in to vote, that is democracy in action. Mm -hmm. But for democracy to work, you have to have arbiters. And the Speaker of the House of Commons, going back to the 1200s, has always been neutral. That is the job of the Speaker. What Burko mm -hmm. did yesterday was to breach those bonds of neutrality, to insult the President of the United States of America, and to be the biggest hypocrite I've ever seen in my life. This man had the North Koreans for tea in his apartment. They're okay and Trump is not. He is a disgrace and he represents a minority view in my country, I'm pleased to say. But it does mean that President Trump will probably not address the British House of Commons because the Speaker can say no and he did say no. Well, there's been a change this afternoon. So Lord Fowler, who is the chairman uh, and, and, and the Speaker of the House of Lords, has managed to get John Burko to apologise for him because he, he can't speak for one house. If the President comes, he would speak to both houses, the Commons and the Lords together. And the Speaker of the Lords has got Burko to apologise, not for insulting Trump, but for misusing procedure. Um, and the Speaker of the House of Lords says he's open-minded, so maybe the game is back on. But frankly, the sooner we're rid of a Speaker like this, the better. I have to say, in previous times, um, somebody, a speaker, who behaved like this would have been dealt with very robustly indeed. <laughs> I, I, I see that it is live action news on both sides of the Atlantic and we're right in the middle of it. Nigel Farage, I'm right here. Nigel, thank you very much indeed. Very important appearance today. Thank you. Thank you, sir.